She's become the belle of the ball. Cynthia Smoot with Oh So Cynthia is the one person you will want to invite to your next party. We'll explain why next on Prime. Hi, I'm Emily Hargrove and welcome to Prime. In the first half of this show, Paige spoke with Rob Brinkley all about the world of print magazine. I am here to talk about the world of blogging with the hottest ticket in town, Cynthia Smoot, from her very popular social savvy blog, Oh So Cynthia. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to be Looking here. Looking gorgeous. You. As I know. purple today. <laughs> I know we are. <laughs> we match, which I love. Um, so tell me, Oh So Cynthia is one of the, as I say, you are a hot ticket in town to get to events and people love having you at the events. And how do you do it? Because you're not only a blogger, but you're a mother, you're a wife, you are, have a day job, social media expert. How do you do it all? I like to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, be being busy is good. Yes. But th this is this is uber busy, and and clearly I am an expert also on time management. <laughs> yes, you I'm have very, to be. I'm very good at categorizing my day. So, oh so Cynthia, where did the idea come from, and has it always been oh so Cynthia? It has always been oh so Cynthia, but the blog has gone through several um, evolutions in terms of the theme. Um, it started out really as a mommy blog. Um, when my son was little, all of my family lives out of town, out of the country even. And so I thought, well, a blog would be a fun way for me to keep them up to date with what we're doing with my son and, you know, and us and share little stories about our, you know, life. Um, and then very quickly you sort of discover this, like, there's a whole mom blog community out there. And I think as a new parent, it was very validating for me to read about other people's experiences and go, okay, I'm not screwing this up. Right. I do actually know what I'm doing. And, you know, and you can relate to other people's funny stories. Um, and then companies started approaching me, you know, to review their products or, you know, attend events, you know, and, and for me, you know, I, I'm always shocked that anyone reads my blog. I mean, like my own mother, I'm like, you didn't read my blog? And she's like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it sometime after bridge, you know, so you're, I'm always surprised when anyone reads it. So when companies started reaching out to me, I was like, what, Glade, you want me to review your toilet bowl cleaner? And you're going to send me one for free? Awesome. <laughs> that you word know. for free. I, th I yes, know, right? I will have that. I'm more. So that's kind of how it started was just really um, as a mommy blog. And then it has sort of um, organically over time evolved into what it is today, which is more of a um, social commentary on life in Dallas. And, and you said, uh, I remember talking about off camera, you said when your son was 10 years old, he said, no more. No more, Mom. Right. Well, my son started um, fifth grade, and we had gotten him a cell phone because apparently when you enter fifth grade, you're completely uncool if you don't have a phone. At least this is what he told me. So we got him a phone, and um, apparently a, a couple weeks into school, he and all of his friends are sitting around one day, and they decide to all Google their names. And, of course, nothing comes up for any of his friends. But for him, it's like page after page after page and <laughs> photographs and video, and all his friends were like, whoa, you know. And so he came home stomping into my office and said, why am I on the internet? And I'm like, what? So literally he pulled up a chair and we spent the next two hours going through the entire catalog of every post I had ever done. Um, and, you know, and he was like, okay, that one's all right. I can live with that. And that one's got to go. <laughs> no bathtub photos with the bubbles. No, that's <laughs> that's out of here. Yeah. Um, there were very few things he asked me to delete. So once he knew what was there, he was fine with it. But at that point, he pretty much in his 10-year-old way said, um, this party, it's over. You need to find a new hobby. <laughs> and at that point, I had already built up this following and was working with companies and having a great time. And I was kind of like... Well, now what am I going to do? Right. But I, you know, completely understood his perspective and where he was coming from. And, you know, he was becoming his own person. And I have to respect that. Yes. Um, I think a lot of mommy bloggers will be encountering this um, as they, their kids get older. And so, you know, I thought, well, the whole theme of the blog had always sort of been about our life in Dallas mm -hmm. and all the places we went and things that we did. Um, so I just sort of decided to hone that focus a little bit more and talk more about what I loved about Dallas. And that's really... Um, what started that a couple of years ago and then the whole thing just sort of exploded and now I'm kind of like gosh why did I not do this like five years ago yes but there was a reason why yeah it was, was very it was very organic the way that it happened and also you know had had I tried to do this four or five years ago with with my son being smaller I wouldn't have 
I've been as free to attend the event. So it really, it all happened the way it was supposed to. Yeah, isn't that? Life happens like that. It does. It's, and so you want to shine a light on, on the great and the good in Dallas and all of the amazing things that go on here. And, but I mean, how, what does it entail to keep it up? Because keeping up a blog is, is it's, you know, it takes a lot of work, but then you're also going to all of the events. So what does it entail for you? Well, I think you can't have a successful blog if you don't truly have a passion for what it is you're doing. It's that authenticity, mm -hmm. I think, that connects me with my readers. Um, and I truly love the city of Dallas. And so for me, it's a joy to, you know, find new discoveries, hidden little boutiques, discover a new fashion designer that maybe people um, don't know about yet um, and, and help, you know, introduce them to a wider audience. And so, um, you know, I love that there are so many incredible charities here trying to do good in our community. It's amazing, yeah. And, you know, they say everything is bigger and better in Texas, and that is so true. And I'm one who believes that we should just embrace the stereotype. <laughs> I love my big hair. I love my big <laughs> bling. I love my six inch stilettos. I mean, let's just rock it and go for it. It's what makes us different, it's why the world loves us. Um, so, you know, Dallas is coming back on TNT <sighs> June 13th. So I'm like, bring it on. I, I love say, it. I went to the um, quick sidebar, I went to the uh, premiere of the launch of it last week, and that to me was, <laughs> it was the highlight of my life. It was over the top, wasn't I it? I loved it. I was literally shouting Bobby at the top of my at the top of my voice. But that's a quick sidebar. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, so you meet not only the, the, the great philanthropic, you see this great philanthropic side of Dallas, but you also, as you say, you point out the fashion designers and the jewelry designers. And who are some of the, you know, your favorite people that you've met? doing your blog? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, I have so many favorite people, you know, and the blog would probably be more successful from a business standpoint if I would sort of just focus on a niche and be like, you know, people are like, I think a lot of companies are like, are you a fashion blogger? Or are you a food blogger? You know, and I say I'm a lifestyle blogger. Right. I want to talk about what I love. And that's like a multitude of things. Um, and for me, that's half the fun. So um, like with our fashion community, we have um, Naka is an up-and-coming designer. Mm -hmm. She, you know, Kim Kardashian has been spotted in her designs recently. Brooklyn Decker. Um, I, I'm on the board of the Fashionistas, and the whole purpose of that organization is to help promote the local fashion scene in Dallas and educate up-and-coming designers. Mm -hmm. So I love being a part of that community. Um, in terms of food, I mean, we have an incredible culinary scene here with world-class chefs and amazing restaurants, and I love to eat. I mean, I always say, if we're going to be friends, you better like to eat, because if you call me up and say, do you want to do something, my first question is going to be, well, where are we going to eat? Yeah. So girls who don't like to eat, we will not be friends. <laughs> and, you, and, and as you like to eat, you look fabulous. Hey, well, so. you know, <laughs> I just don't eat. My trick is I don't eat a lot. But as long as you I have nibble. that taste sensation. Yes. I love taste sensations, too. Yes. All about those. And then, you know, we have an, an amazing art scene. I mean, the Woodall Rogers Park that they're mm -hmm. building and the whole explosion that we've seen with the new Dallas Arts District and the, you know, the Windspear and the Wiley. I mean, we, there's just, there's so much, there's something for everyone, and that's what I love to talk about. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's wonderful to see that, to see the diversity of what there is here. Mm -hmm. And um, so do you find that you're out every night, or is it a few times a week, and then you pack everything into one night? Well, my favorite kind of night is when there are two or three things happening on one night, so I can stop by a kickoff party, have a glass of champagne, take a few photos, then I'll go to a restaurant opening, have dinner, and then I'll cap it off by hitting, you know, something else. So, you know, that to me is three separate blog posts. And so you as the reader think, oh, my gosh, she was out every night. Right. There's three different posts, but it was really, that was two hours. Well, do you take a different night. change of clothes so you can have, like, have a different no, look? I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> that. In the back of your car, have a little changing room. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. You get one outfit for the <laughs> night, that's it. Take it or leave it. Although sometimes it can be challenging to pick the appropriate outfit depending on, you know, if you're going to several different events. Like last night I went to a store opening in West Village and then I was going to a restaurant party. And so, you know, I was very overdressed for the boutique opening. But, you know, it's always better to be overdressed than underdressed. It, uh, it, absolutely. I can yes. live with that. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. You, obviously, you have your blog, but I mean, you're a social media expert, and that's what you do during the day for clients. Yes. And so the, the world of social media, it is just, it's exploding and changing at every turn. 
how do you keep up with it? And, and what would you say to people, okay, these are the, if you could only be involved in a few key social media projects, what would they be? Gosh, well, I think it depends on what is your reason for wanting to get into social media. Um, first of all, as a marketer, this is an incredibly exciting time to be in the world of media and marketing. I mean, I feel like the pioneer in the Wild West. This is all sort of new and unexplored territory. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun um, to sort of be one of, we're the first generation to really have to explore and experiment and implement um, these new online platforms into traditional media and figure out how this is all going to work for our clients. Right. Um, so that's exciting. It it's is. also extremely challenging. Um, so I would say, you know, in, in fact, I just had a client email me yesterday who said, I'm not on any of this stuff. If I'm going to start, like, do I need to do Facebook or Twitter? And I always say start with Facebook right. um, because it's where the most people are. It's mm -hmm. the number one social media site of the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so start with Facebook because it's very user friendly. You're going to find the most people there to interact with. Um, something like Twitter is it works completely differently. So, you know, but if you're a photographer and you love pictures, I would say get on Pinterest. Right. So I think it just depends on, you know, you have to be personally vested and want to explore the site um, or you're not going to you're going to turn off to it. Right. And you need to be on it, too. Yeah. And you really I, I think one of the things that I've gathered from social media is you've just got to keep it up. Right. And, uh, and, then, and for me, I think Facebook is fabulous because it's an amazing way to keep up with, you know, your high school friends and your college friends and your family that maybe, you know, like maybe I don't want to sit down and have a two hour dinner with you, but I didn't mean you know, I don't want to keep up, yes, you know, yeah, yeah. see family photos every now and then. So it's a great, you kind of can keep your finger on the pulse of a lot of different relationships um, without having to, you know, we're so limited in the free time that we have these days. So I think it allows you to sort of maintain a lot of connections and then you choose which ones you're going to take offline and, and take, nurture take to that. a deeper level. Right. And what would you say to somebody who wants to get in social media? They've never, they say, you know, I quite like that. And I think that maybe I'd like to do that as a, as a career. What would be, you know, the first thing that you'd say to them? Well, first of all, I think it's amazing that you can even get a degree in social media. You can? Yeah. Yes. Oh I mean, my gosh. I don't, I, know what I don't know what they're calling it, but you can actually get like interactive and social media degrees. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Um, I mean, well, I think that just gives credibility to the fact that this is a, it's a hugely transformational time in media and people are recognizing its importance that, that that's an area of study. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you just have to have a passion for it. Just like if you were going to be a doctor or a teacher, I mean, if this is truly what you love and you you know, this whole marketing aspect and online digital media, it, then it's just an amazing opportunity. Well, that's what's so wonderful about you is that, is that you see the passion coming out of you about it. And that's what, and it's so refreshing to see that, you know, that not enough people in life have that. So it's really <laughs> wonderful. And, oh, thank you. and Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. Follow her, ososynthia.com. And if you haven't invited her to a party yet, you need to. Join us next time. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.